is the latest. Hot and crispy. We got that fire. Chris Berringer right here. Author of Behind the Smile. Can we get a close-up? Yeah. Now, Chris got a smile, too. But she got a really deep story behind her smile. Thanks, Chris, for coming. I appreciate you. Now, where you get the inspiration for the book, and what is the book all about? My life struggles gave me the inspiration, honestly. And the reason why I came with that name, with that title, is people who know me personally know that I act different, and I act goofy, and I just want everybody to be happy so I get a good time. So for the people who's reading my book now that I went to high school with or middle school, it's like a total different picture because I didn't know, but I never told nobody. And the reason for my story is to let everybody know, be considerate to the next person yeah. because it's not what people think it is, honestly. People are in disguise and you'll never know what a person's going through. So because of what I went through gave me the idea to write the title behind every smile because I smiled through it all. Right. Regardless of what I went through, yeah. I smiled through it all. Well, did you have any apprehension when you were writing the book when you knew that people you grew up with and that loved and knew you before you came out with the book that they were going to be uh, surprised by the content of your book? Did, were, were you apprehensive about that? I knew people were going to be surprised, <laughs> including my own family <laughs> oh, <laughs> on both wow. sides. Listen, my whole family, especially my mom's side, my whole family, for one, they get me confused with my auntie. They always think I'm my auntie. But they never knew what I was going through. And y'all were my family. And when my grandmother died 17 years ago, my whole family just, like, fell off. So my mom raised us a little bit differently. Than your grandmother. Yes. And everything changed. For and the better or the worse? There's a blessing in the storm. Thank you. I like how you said better. <laughs> There was a blessing in the storm because I thank my mom. So for it was some challenges. Yes. Some rough times and rough seas. But it's to make you grow. I want people to take every bad thing and think of something good out of it. You got to make it. People say, when well, you got lemonade. I mean, we got lemons, make lemonade. You are not going to make lemonade because you don't got no sugar. Drink some lemon water. You will still get by. And uh, I'd have done that before at a restaurant. Without uh -uh. giving a book away, can you give us an example of you know, maybe it's some of the rough patches, some of the things you went through. Okay. Um, my mother made me starve. And she had food, a lot of food. And, okay, don't look at me like that. It's I'm listening. To, I'm I not know. looking at you like nothing. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> okay, example, we would take Hot Pockets and um, toaster strudels and put them in the dryer. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> don't slow down. I, I, don't interrupt now. <laughs> hold on. Hot po all I know is something about hot pockets <laughs> and the dryer. Okay. No, listen. Real, real. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, I was about to get real. Listen. Okay. <laughs> there would be a hot pocket or a trusted strudel, and we'll put them in a the dryer when we had to dry the clothes because we had to clean up. Me and my older brother. My life was like. So y'all sneaking food. Listen, we stole food. We snuck through the alarm systems. My mama read the book, so now she know how we snuck through the alarm systems. But she used to have bar windows and locks on the freezers and refrigerators and stuff. But we went through it all because it's like we stole and we were risking hit because it's like, dude, forget that. I got to eat. But it was like sometimes we did eat. She not didn't starve us like every day. But it were her days. And they'd be like, dude, why you do that? But I'm not looking at that. My mom's the type of person that will budget her money and stock up on food. I use that to this day because people my age and went to school with me and stuff run out of food stamps and run out of food. Thank God for my mom. I get my food stamps on the 12th, and I got food until next month. Huh? And I'm not running out How of food. How many people can say that? You get the None stamps of them. The, you get the stamps on the 12th, you just sold them on the 13th, and you hungry on the 14th. No, listen, I got $60. No, listen, I have $60 left, and I get my food stamps in two more days. So and can I we hook up after food this? Food you know, so I can have a couple of them dollars off the food stamps. I gave some to my papa. I can get some to you. I can sell it. But it's a thing of budgeting. Okay. And people don't cherish things until they're gone. So hold on. So even though, you know, your mom took you through that challenge, you I paid attention to what she was doing. 
Right. So it, it wasn't all for the bad. It was it was she was trying to make sure she had everything she could right. afford to feed you guys exactly. for the whole month. But in your understanding, <laughs> hold on, hold on. But from your understanding, when you were little, you was taking it as a slight. Like, wait a minute, I'm not being uh, treated right. At all. I was like, this is a jungle. I got to survive. <laughs> right. Uh, so, right, though. I'm a fighter. So so mom had to smile, but behind that smile the whole time, she was thinking, like, I got to feed these babies all month. I can't wait till the next month. My know? mother, no, my mother really was looking out for us because she said, I'm not going to have without. My mother is a motivate. She is a money hungry person, but she motivated me. She has to get it because nobody helps my mother. My mother out here and raised four kids by herself. Whether she did it right or wrong, she still raised her kids by herself with no help, and her mom is gone. Oh. Y'all don't understand yeah. my mother, and I'm trying to yeah. understand her. That's why I say behind every smile. My mother is sweet and all, but it, she's hurting, and there's something behind that smile, and I want to understand her. But we all now, need to be hold understood. On. Now, 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 Chris. You got a lot of fire in you. Thank you. And that book ain't <laughs> holding it all. Trust me. It's oh, bursting, that's why I got it's, plenty it's more to come. The it's the beginning. The oven is just preheated. The food ain't even in yet. That's the second book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, was there a challenge in your life that pushed you to the brink of, you know, where you might have had a breakdown, but you were able to gather yourself? Where I wanted to give up is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Yes, there were times in high school. Um, again, I dealt with everything since second grade, and in tenth grade when my older brother left, because it was cool with me dealing with my older brother, because I was in it together. But when I had to do it by myself and me being disabled, going to school, people gonna think you soft. It's like okay, now I gotta fight this person and prove to them I'm mad. My mama beat me. A punch not gonna mean anything. So let's get it over with. Because I'm always mad when I come to school. I'm always what mad. What was you mad at? How I got raped. <laughs> Starving. Hungry. I'm hungry. Don't no, say listen. nothing to me. I ain't eat. <laughs> no, listen. I can't get no juice. You're telling me. I fought a girl over apple juice. And it's a principle because that was the only type of juice I could get right now. So you're going to really drink that? My mouth is dry? No. I fought my roommate in college over the seat part of my crunch bar. I cherish my food. I take that. When somebody give me food, I take that like they my best friend. Mm -hmm. I take that for a reason, personal. Just like when my mom made me clean up like I'm Cinderella. I just didn't have a prince. I had a check I didn't find out about. But because I clean up, I clean up now like my mom. And I don't want nobody touching my dishes or nothing. Because if so you don't what was like it her, that pushed you to the brink? It was how I was getting raised. And it, I ain't going to put my mother business out there. But I got to the point where. I got choked with a car and I passed out. Wait a minute, you didn't put the business Listen. out there. Okay. <laughs> That's just one. <laughs> That's just one. That's okay. just one. Okay. I know how to get hit with a fax machine core, with a vacuum cleaner core, with a pole on the elbow, drinking hot water. I taste urine before. I'd have been through a lot because of my mother. But I take that all in because I've been through so much pain. I got hit with a bat. Again, a punch ain't going to do nothing for me. Do, through so all I of that, the, through yeah. all of that, do you forgive your mom? You know why I have to forgive my mom? Okay. I'm just not answering the question. Yeah, I have you, a reason why. <laughs> okay, okay. I love her. Because you circumvented the answer. I love her. You love her. The most. Okay. Regardless of what she did and how she did it. Again, so I'm taking every good thing out of it. You didn't forgive. At, the, at that time when I was a kid, no. Oh, but you, but you have it, forgiveness it's now. It's a healing. It's called mastering anger. That's why I changed my fire into mastering anger because it's a healing process. Yeah. And to this day, when I wrote that book, I cried. So I know I still have a problem. Mm -hmm. And my family is so broken, I cannot fix them. But I want to help a lot of people. They're not going to hear from me and my family because I'm little old me. But outside looking in, it's somebody else. So if I can help others, I want to. But by giving my book an example. What, what, else, what, yeah, what else has helped you exercise your demons Besides your writing. Back to my mother, school. I always thought school was the way out. And even though she didn't come to my first graduation and I pulled her to go to my high school, I always thought school was the way out. And I always had a heart to want to help, but I assumed that it was going to be a nurse or a doctor. I was always thinking some type of medical stuff. But I always had a heart to help. And because of what I went through, I went through, I went to jail five times for something I didn't do in domestic violence and I still have a record. I gave the judge my book too. So I hope he just like drop it, you know, like a little bit. 
Check up on it. No, yeah, for real, because uh, that's not cool. Domestic yeah. violence, dude, don't put that on my record. Like, I work at daycares and stuff. I'm cool with kids. That's my little work history. Don't What's put his that name on Judge me. what? I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Judge Patton, listen up. Pay attention. This he woman has went through floor, a lot, but she's seeking to change her life. No, listen. He's me and my older brother, Judge, my two sister Judge on my dad's side. And because I went through that, though, criminal justice field, mm -hmm. I look at criminal justice differently now because since birth, when I had a brain tumor and stuff, I could, didn't sue the doctors. And right now they're telling me I can't sue. Uh, y'all took a piece of my brain and I'm um, trying to like understand what everything happened to me. Y'all telling me y'all can't give me nothing? No. Wow. I need some type of justice. Not just from that, because I went to jail for something I didn't do, which gave me an eye open to other people. Innocent people actually do go to jail. And it messes up their mind mentally. And if you think differently, you act differently. Yeah. Just how my older brother, he has a heart and he wants to love, but he's the opposite of me. And I blame my mother for a part way because she mentally messed him up. Like she mentally messed me up. So that's why the title of my third book is titled Deep Within, mm -hmm. because it mentally messes up your mind for the good or for the bad. So well, again, obviously it's, it's, it's been kind of hard for you to forgive your mama. You said you love her, so you you want forgiveness. You, you hope that comes into your life. I don't but care I about the past no more. <laughs> you don't care about the past. So that means you are well on to your way to forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, you're to be commended for that because you can't walk around with animosity in your heart for your loved one. It's like holding on to a work and expecting it to go, but you're still feeling that pain by holding it on. Right. What are you going to do with that? It's not right. going to help you. Has anything in your life good happen that help that's helping you get through your stuff that that you can smile about my relationship with god i'll tell you that <laughs> i ran into my mom i said i thank you she was like what i said because of pain i ran to god because i would have never had a relationship with god if i wasn't disabled i would have never had a relationship with god if i what didn't are you disabled at? What, how are you disabled okay medically scientifically however people want to say it i have limited use of my right hand and my right foot. But ask me to roll up something, <laughs> tie up my shoe, <laughs> fight, cook. Clearly, I got to take a shower. I take care of myself, and I stay by myself since 2010. Huh? Um, yeah. I'm disabled to them. So I would act away because I would wear my brace like I'm doing now. <laughs> and I have a foot brace that I would wear at certain times to act my appearance. Because the goal is behind every smile, behind every appearance. Looks are deceiving. People can deceive you. Be considerate of the person you meet, yeah. whether for the good or for the bad. Yeah, yeah, be considerate, whether for the good or the bad. For real. That's a good Because people life seem lesson. like they anything, but you'll never know what a person is capable of doing unless they're doing it at that time and you're next to them. I can say I never kill nobody, but put me in a protective predicament. I might do it. Who knows? Nobody knows. Yeah. Now, has, your, ha, has, right. <laughs> ha, has your mom seen your book? My mom read the book. I don't know if she read all of it, but I know. She, has I'm, she brought it up to you? We really didn't have a, actually, we really didn't have a, like a, a whole real conversation because I feel like using my book is open up to my mother to try to fix me and my mother because I want a mother and daughter relationship. Oh, but wait a minute. So let me get this straight. So you. Part of the reason of writing a book, you thought it a thought. Oh, of ice I wrote my book that. for ten thousand reasons. If 10, you want to ask me, ten thousand. <laughs> but one of them being that yeah, you, one of you, which you, that you thought it would forge a relationship between you and your mom and yes. heal things. Huh? Exactly. Uh, how many people think like that though? That, yeah, you know, want to write a book. <laughs> You know, just so, I, hey, I'm a mom, mom, reason, listen to me. Why. You haven't been listening to me, but I want to give you this so you can understand where your daughter's coming from. You know, you want to understand these blow-ups that we have, and you want to understand my tantrums and temp temper tantrums and why I walk out and why I shut down when we argue. Mm -hmm. Am I accurate? You're very accurate. What about your dad? Ooh. Not been around? He, you said he wasn't in your life. But I know my dad. You know your dad. I always know my dad. You I got to watch anything, the words I say. You, you hold anything towards him in your heart? Honestly, when my dad called me a handicapped B two different times, I feel some type of way because I lose respect for he him. He calls you a handicapped B. 
two different times. <laughs> well, Chris, Chris, hold on. Listen, I tried to explain to him and my grandpa. If you call on. me alcoholic, where no, I get I it from? I gotta ask because that's kind of rather harsh for parents to, to rag on their. No, listen. My mother like told the cops when I got when the dude had a gun and the taser. His part was a taser, but both pointed at me and they told me to put my hands up and I'm telling them. And I have to explain to them I'm disabled. And my mom said, I don't know. That made me cry because I had to go to the city jail and the workhouse. And I'm just trying Your to graduate. Your mom said she don't know. She what don't know. And I don't did know what? that I'm disabled because the cops asked me. He said, put my hands up. What's, what's, what's in your other hand? I'm disabled. Is she disabled? I, I don't know. You know what Maybe. it sounds like to me? What you, know how some, you know how some parents, you know, when they, they might have had this. Tell me if I'm wrong. It seemed like, you know, some parents, they had their children early in life, and it, it, it thwarted their own growth, so they kind of take it out on the children because they didn't get to live a full life. You know, they take their children through a bunch of changes. No, listen, I understand, because my mama had a scholarship to Ohio State University, yeah, but she I knew had it. two I knew kids. It. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. That, no, I'm glad this came it up, is, though. but I, her life could have been so different. If she would have did it so different, I'm like, oh. Well, let, let me. <laughs> let, 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 well, let, let me let me ask you this. Let me let me say. But this. she made me, so it's the reason why. <laughs> Give him a mic. Give him a mic, because you can't hear him without a mic. But okay. Well, now you you say okay. Your your mom. Now that's real deep. That's often the case. That's often the case in in, in families. When, when, when a parent has children early in the game and they're by themselves, left, left to raise their children by themselves, then they go through a lot because they're broke or stunted in, in themselves. So she took it out on you and things. Speak to people that's in your predicament, young girls, young boys, that's in your predicament where they're growing up with some of the, in some of the same situations, some of the same environment, but you want to help them early on so they won't have to deal with so much pain. Can you speak to so them? You Thing. Yeah, please. Oh, you turn to the back of the book. Because I really kind of want to read the back of the book. Go, 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 go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, no. You can read the back okay, of the book. I'm a, I'm, okay, I'm going to read it. I'm going to say my statement. Okay, let's read it. When it comes to an individual, some can be defined as statistics, while others are made to stand out, backing up the definition of unique. Statistics say, I should have died. Statistics say I was supposed to suffer from Down syndrome. Statistics say I wouldn't be able to walk or talk. Statistics told my mom to prepare to bury a child, but our God said otherwise. Every statistics that was thrown at me never prospered. Instead, the exact opposite happened, and what the doctors didn't expect to happen had unfortunately actually happened. However, had fortunately actually happened. However, I struggled with the disability, but not how others assumed I struggled for it, was more of a mental struggle than a physical struggle. Although I'm labeled as a disabled person, my appearance may, will, shall fool you, and throughout this book, and more to come, it will tell you why you should never judge a book by its cover, regardless of who or what a person may appear to be, for what for for what looks can will be defeated, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's 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 you very. Need my dedication. Yeah, yeah. Where, where's the dedication at? Okay, on the. No, like open the book. Okay. <laughs> like on the second page, I think. Okay, the dedication. All right, listen up. I would like to first dedicate this book to Player T because he's one heck of a talk show. <laughs> no, hold on. All right. I would like to first dedicate this book to my three siblings on my mom's side for only they know the true meaning behind this book and can relate to it. I also would like to dedicate this book to every man and woman that goes through their trials and tribulations who has ever been hurt, neglected, abused, sexually, mentally, or physically, betrayed by a loved one or trusted one, and for those who came out of poverty and struggling to make ends meet. For we all have a story that I believe needs to be told just to encourage or self-motivate one another. The goal is to not, and I mean never give up on your dream. 
goal, plan, or ambition, spirit, but most importantly, don't give up on God, for he has not gave up on me, and this book will explain all, explain it all, for I am a living witness to his grace and mercy, starting from birth, and I'm not ashamed to tell the world all what I have been through, dealt with, and handled with God going through it with me. After all, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. In Jesus' name, amen.